Hi guys. Pond Winders, what a fantastic idea. Look at this. <laughs> the fish is just here. Put a chair in front, get a cup of coffee or a, an evening uh, aperitif. Sit in front of your pond, watch your fish. Fantastic. So how did I fit it? My advice is get the biggest window you can. Um, I wanted mine down down the side. I, sh I should have done mine down the side of the pond. But because of my first window, I wasn't sure about the size. I wasn't sure how to put it in. I tell you what, it's like buying a TV. You go out and you buy yourself a 50-inch TV, put it on your wall, massive. You think, wow, that's fantastic. Three weeks later, should have done a 60-inch. It, it's like that. Engineering is a little bit different. You've got to start thinking about how the, the, the glasses, what kind of frame the glass is going to fit in. Um, the, the larger your glass, the more volume of water you're going to have pushing against the glass. I've seen somewhere, on, there was somebody online who did, built a pond with a humongous window and it actually bowed. The window bowed because there was a lot of pressure pushing against it. But what you've got to think is it's the, all the top pressure, it's all the water at the top that's pushing against your window, not down the bottom. The, all the major pressure is down at the bottom, so up here is not too bad. But again, depends how deep you go. Hey, Jiggy. What you also have to be very aware of is these windows are dead heavy. Um, this one wasn't too bad. I was able to carry this uh, just on, on by myself. And this is this window that I had was just over a meter by 470. Um, you start getting bigger than that, and they, they get really heavy because they're very thick, very thick glass. So yeah, be, make be aware that when it gets delivered to your front door. You've got to try to carry it into your house, make sure you've got people, somebody with you. If you've got a big one, if this one, there's, you know, it's just quite a small window. I wish I'd have gone bigger, but I didn't. But um, yeah, so be aware, very heavy. Okay, so once you've sussed how big your wind is going to be, you've got to be very accurate with this because it's fitting into, a, into, the, into the space that you've created. I bought my window from a place in Liverpool called Tough X, T U F F X. This window was uh, 150 pounds delivered, so it was a really reasonable price. It's uh, two sheets of 12.5 mil thick glass. One of the things they do ask is, are you sure this glass is what you want it for? They do a lot of searching up online. There's somewhere online where you can get these kind of calculations uh, and, and try to work that out. This is my plan. So this is the plan I drew up. And, and um, as you can see on there, it was kind of sketched, back of a fag packet kind of stuff. Um, the top bit is really just the, what I was going to do with the pond. And the, the bottom bit you're looking at there is how I sketched the window. So the window measurements had to be quite accurate because I was very aware that I was putting the frame in as well. I had a, a stainless steel frame going in that the window would sit in. So here's the gap. So I basically created the gap for the window itself. The little round circle thing you can see on the right hand side of the picture there is for the inlet. So that's for this, that's for the inlet there. I got a, lo a local fabricator to make my frame up. So the frame I had built is a five mil thick angle, two inch by two inch. Created the frame um, and put it in a hole like this because you're gonna get, you know, hopefully you need to get it fiberglassed over the top of that. So they're just basically some six mil raw plugs and some screws I found in the garage lying around and just held it in place. So don't worry about too much about them, just, just as long as it holds it in place. So as soon as you, you, your frame is in, um, as you can see in this picture as well, I'd put in the insulation while I was doing this because everything needed, the frame's got to go in before your fiberglassing goes in. So once it's screwed in place, as you can see all the screws are now in place, I completed the putting the insulation in, which was some 25 mil uh, thick foam sheets. I was going to go for that stuff that you get put in homes with the stuff with the silver stuff on the back of it, but uh, dead expensive that was, and I, I couldn't really afford. I was I was kind of running to the maximum budget a little bit over on the pond as it was, so fitted them on. Fiberglass came in then, and fiberglass over the top of the lot. So we fiberglass is over everything then to create your opening and your gap. Unfortunately, I haven't got a picture of what it looked like before it went in, but you can see from the outside on this picture of how it looked from the outside. Now this video is based on my size window with a blocked and fiberglass pond. So if, for example, you had a wooden pond 
then you, you could still use a frame, I suppose, or you could just write a router or whatever they call it, you know, cut out the uh, frame for it uh, and, then, and then glue it in. But I suppose you'd be using a liner. So I suppose you'd have to trap the liner behind the frame. That might make it easier if you had a frame. Trap the liner behind the frame, uh, silicon behind there, and away you go. I was told never, never let the glass touch the steel um, because mine basically was just put on uh, the fiberglass. Your glass needs to be delivered in and you need a pair of these. Glass holders. <laughs> really good idea these glass holders are. They enable you to control the window when it's going in. So if you imagine you, I'm, you, you stood inside your pond and you're looking at the frame and you've got to try to hold the glass top and bottom is it's, this, this glass is very, hot, very heavy and if there's two of you in there because you've got a large piece of glass then you've got to figure out how you're going to do it because your bottom hand is, is going to be, that's the bottom where the glass is, is going to have to go into a sit in, into the silicon. So now all of a sudden you're having to drop it into the silicon. Bad idea. I got hold of these from B&Q uh, and they basically just plug to the window um, with these little, what's it here? Little holders. Um, got them from B&Q, fantastic idea. The only thing is I haven't used them since. I used them once to put the window in and I used them once the other week to help a mate put his mirror in his, in his bathroom the other day. So if you can find them second hand on eBay, um, I just kept hold of mine because of, you never know, a mate down the road might want his mirror putting in his bathroom. So now you've got to imagine I'm inside the pond looking out with this view. But don't forget, I've already got it fiberglass, so you've got to kind of pretend there's fiberglass around the, around the frame as well. So I'm going to put the bead of silicon in. You can also get the silver, silver label, aquarium, fish safe stuff, which is quite good. Um, and I'm going to put two lots of beads on here, one on the frame itself and then one on the base. The base one is to hold, obviously, the, 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 the bottom of the glass in, but what I've also got hold of were some of these five millimeter. You put these in, in the bottom of windows when you put double glazed windows in, you sit the window on them, so it gives you this, the gap underneath to put silicon. So I use these. Um, so the, the, the lot of silicon, two lots of silicon going on. Your silicon gun, you need to cut it quite low down in its tube so that you've got this rather large, because that's going to be the width of your, of, your, of your bead of silicon going in. So your silicon itself, what you need to try to do the first lot, the way I did it was run a silicon all the way around. The second bead you need to put on before the window goes in is the one down the bottom. So you're putting one down the bottom of your frame to sit your window on with these bottoms. So this will stop it, because there's a lot of weight of these windows, and this will stop it completely going onto the, onto the floor. It'll only go down as, as low as that. So I put one, two, three of these in. Now the bead itself, it's got to be quite thick. Uh, I must have used, well flipping out, I must have used half a dozen tubs, or tubes should I say, of this silicon stuff. So you find yourself buying a lot of these. You won't do it with one tub anywhere close. You just have to be very steady, take your time doing the bead, nice thick bead. Some people do wiggly lines all the way down, some people do two, three different lines, but you get air bubbles trapped behind it then. So I just did one thick bead, and a little top tip here for you as well. I'd, before you start using the tube, is to put it in some, a bucket of warm water because it, can, it is quite thick, this stuff. Not hot water, just warm water, and just leave it for half an hour or so. Just let the, the stuff in the tube soften up. It comes out a lot easier then. Uh, but yeah, one thick line, um, and expect to buy a number of these tubes. Because the silicons can kind of squeeze out your frame when you push it on, is I put some masking tape. As you can see on this picture here, if you look on the edges, there is masking tape that I put on. Because when, when you put your window on, it kind of pushes a little bit of the silicon if you put a little bit too much on, which is too much, too much is, is, is okay. Not enough is not good. So a little bit more than you need is, is better. But it does squeeze out every now and again. It's hard to get off your window. So I put this mas that masking tape on. So all I did when I'm done, I cut it off and it made a nice neat bead around the window. So I've got the, got the bead, got the bottom bead, got my little things in the middle, window's ready to go in. I'm, if you can now imagine I'm stood inside the pond. I've got the window with me. I've got me glass holders holding the window. Um, it took two of us to do this. Uh, my wife stood on the outside, bless her, um, wondering what the hell I was doing. Um, she was on the outside getting ready to, to hold the window in. Two of us to do this, and my wife on the outside. I was on the inside. Now, because you've got the bead across the bottom, you're basically just putting the glass onto your little window spaces with a little bit of an angle back to you. And then all you're doing then is marrying it and pushing it towards, pushing it towards the frame. 
Now as you're doing this, you'll find that the bead all the way around will start spreading into the gap. Now you don't want to push it right to because you need a little bit of that bead. You need at least a couple of mil bead all the way around. So just, just push it into place so that you can see the mastic separate all the way around the frame. So the window's now in place. So it's now time to take the window holders off, but holding your window still in situ with the person inside the pond, take them off, pass them to the person outside. The person outside now is looking at this. They've now got the window with you stood inside, pushing against the window, holding it into its frame. The person out here then has to fit these to the window on the outside. And then you're going to use these to hold back and hold the window in, in, in place. So I did this, as you can see now in this picture, with the ladder and then some ropes and then tied the, the, the ropes, tied the ladder to the, the window frame holders uh, with the ropes and this just held it there. And that, that just stayed there for 24 hours and I just let that go off. This is a little plan that I pulled off. This picture you can see now is, is a, something I pulled off the internet to show the, how the window is going in. It's just basically what I've just told you now, but it was just a, an illustration that I used and I found quite helpful. So the next morning, or 12 hours later, or whatever it says on the, on the tub, for it to go off, as soon as you're happy that it's gone off, um, you can then go around and then start creating this at the second bead uh, and tidying it up a little bit, get your, get your Stanley knife and snip off the bits that have squeezed through and whatnot uh, on your window. And then as soon as you've got it dry, you need to get the water in because it's the water that is holding this window in, as well as the bead. So you don't want that bead to be totally reliant on the window. You need to get the water in because the water pressure pushes the window into its space and holds the, holds the window in. Cleaning them, yeah, obviously it depends on the weather. If you've got some really nice sunny weather, then you'll need to clean them more often because they do grow algae on them. Uh, I probably do this once a week in the summer and once every other week or once a month in the winter. Uh, to be honest, in the winter, I don't see it. Uh, if you go back to my winter prep video, it shows you how to cover these things. I've put, made myself little covers for it because you'll lose a lot of heat through these things in the, in the winter. So I've created a little insulation panel that, that hangs on the side of there. And that's, if you go back to find the video of winter prep, um, it tells you all about how to, uh, to do that as long with these covers. Because obviously we're in winter now, I'm, I'm making this video in winter. Uh, I just had a lot of people asking because people are building ponds now. Uh, if you're not sure about building a pond, I've done another video on building a pond as well, so look for my video boiling ponds. So if by all means, if you click the subscribe button down there, uh, ding the bell, bing, you'll get the notifications when these come through. Go through my library of other videos. There's loads of stuff in there that I've created over the last 12 months since building this pond. This pond's now 12 months old, uh, and I started creating these videos in lockdown, give me something to do. Okay, so there you have it. I uh, hope you've enjoyed watching the video. If, you th if there's things you think I've missed out on, please comment below and I'll uh, try to help and answer where I can. So I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Thanks very much. This was Koi Pan Lifestyle.